Hello and welcome back to another Parry This Alternate History video. This video explores a captivating hypothetical scenario. The impact of American Civil War cavalry troops thrust back in time to the Battle of Camden during the Revolutionary War. The Battle of Camden, a critical engagement fought on August 16, 1780 in South Carolina, was a decisive British victory that shaped the course of the Revolutionary War. It epitomized the strategic struggles, military tactics, and the harsh realities of 18th century warfare. Contrasting sharply with the revolutionary era's military landscape are the soldiers from the American Civil War, equipped with advanced 19th century weaponry and tactics. The introduction of these troops, armed with Spencer carbines, Colt revolvers, and cavalry sabers, into the Camden battlefield poses a fascinating question. How would their presence have altered the battle's outcome? Leading these troops is Major General Philip Sheridan, a figure renowned for his strategic acumen in the Civil War, adding an intriguing leadership dynamic to the scenario. This investigation is more than a mere flight of fans. It's a detailed examination of how changes in warfare technology and tactics could influence historical events. Through this lens, this video aims to provide insights into the evolutionary of military practices and their potential impact on key historical moments. We proceed to unravel this extraordinary encounter and assess its hypothetical implications on the Revolutionary War and the broader tapestry of American history. Section 1, The Real Battle of Camden The Battle of Camden, a significant engagement of the American Revolutionary War, was fought on August August 16, 1780, near Camden, South Carolina. This period was marked by British efforts to regain control of the southern colonies, with the Carolinas being a focal point of their campaign. This battle occurred against a backdrop of previous American setbacks in the region, setting the stage for a crucial confrontation between British and American forces. The British forces were commanded by General Charles Cornwallis, a seasoned officer with a keen understanding of military tactics. Under his leadership were well-trained regulars, including the feared Tarleton's Legion, a mixed force of infantry and cavalry. The American forces, led by General Horatio Gates, comprised a mix of Continental Army troops and militia units from various states. Gates was known for his earlier success at the Battle of Saratoga, but faced a daunting challenge at Camden. The British Army at Camden numbered approximately 2,000, consisting primarily of experienced regulars with seasoned light infantry. In contrast, the American forces were larger, with around 3,000 troops, but were less homogenous and included many less experienced militia soldiers. The British troops were armed with smoothbore muskets, bayonets, and light artillery. Their tactics emphasized disciplined volleys and bayonet charges, capitalizing on the training and cohesion of the regulars. The American forces were also equipped with muskets and artillery. They relied heavily on the militia's capability to stand and fight alongside the regulars. However, their varied experience and training levels posed a challenge in maintaining this cohesive battle line. The battle commenced early in the morning on on August 16th, Gates deployed his troops with the militia on the flanks and the Continental regulars in the center. Cornwallis, seizing the initiative, attacked the American left flank where the militia was positioned. The militia, overwhelmed by the disciplined advance of the British regulars with Tarleton's aggressive cavalry charges, broke ranks and fled. This left the Continental regulars exposed and outnumbered. Despite a valiant effort by these regulars, the disintegration of the American line became inevitable, and a full retreat was soon underway. The Battle of Camden was a resounding victory for the British. The Americans suffered approximately 2,000 casualties, including captured, killed, and wounded, while British losses were significantly lower, with around 300 casualties. The defeat severely damaged American morale and military capability in the South. Strategically, it solidified British control over South Carolina, giving them a strong base to launch further operations in the Southern Theater. The impact of Camden on the Revolutionary War was profound, represented not only a tactical and strategic set back for the American forces, but also highlighted the challenges of relying heavily on militia forces in major engagements. The loss forced the Americans to rethink their strategies in the South, eventually leading to a more guerrilla-style warfare approach, which played a crucial role in later successes, such as the Battle of Cowpens and the eventual American victory at Yorktown. Section 2, The Civil War Soldiers In the late period of the American Civil War, cavalry units had evolved significantly from their earlier roles. Initially used primarily for scouting and raiding, they had become integral to the Army's combat and strategic operations by the war's end. These units were now highly mobile, capable of rapid deployment, and able to conduct offensive operations, including direct assaults and flanking maneuvers. The cavalrymen of this era were well-trained and experienced, having learned from the intense and varied engagements of the war. They were skilled in both mounted and dismounted combat, understanding the importance of flexibility in warfare. Their training included saber fencing, marksmanship, horse riding, 
and understanding of tactical reconnaissance and communication. They were accustomed to harsh conditions, long rides, and swift deployments, making them versatile soldiers on the battlefield. During the Civil War, cavalrymen were equipped with a range of essential gear and weaponry. At this time, the Colt 1860 Army Revolver, celebrated for its reliability and firepower, featuring a 44 caliber six-shot cylinder, was the primary sidearm for cavalry troops, and excelled in close-range combat with an effective range of about 75 to 100 yards. Its relatively quick reload time required a brief pause in firing, typically necessitating cover or strategic withdrawal for reloading. Complementing this, the Spencer repeating carbine emerged as a game changer in firearms technology. It boasted a seven round tubular magazine and could fire up to 20 shots per minute, with remarkable accuracy at a range of 500 to 600 yards, significantly surpassing the standard muskets of the era. This advantage was especially crucial in skirmishes and open field battles, as it allowed cavalrymen to fire multiple rounds before reloading, giving them a considerable edge over foes armed with single shot muskets or rifles. And of course, lastly, the cavalry saber, a curved single edged blade designed for slashing, held symbolic importance and played a pivotal role in close combat and cavalry charges, particularly in breaking enemy lines or defending against infantry. In addition to weaponry, cavalrymen also carried other essential gear, including saddles, saddlebags for personal items, and extra ammunition, canteens, and often a blanket or bedroll for campaign use. Ammunition supplies included approximately 40 to 60 rounds for the Colt 1860 and 80 rounds of the 5656 Spencer Rimfire cartridge for the Spencer Carbine. Despite the challenges of resupply during campaigns, the Union Army maintained a robust supply chain, especially during the later stages of the war, ensuring that cavalry units were adequately equipped to carry out their missions effectively. The integration of these weapons and the cavalry's mobility and training significantly enhanced a unit's combat effectiveness. They could engage effectively at various ranges, adapting to changing battlefield conditions, and exert a psychological impact on opponents unaccustomed to facing such rapid and versatile threats. Section 3, Setup and Details. In this imaginative scenario, we're going to transport 200 cavalry cavalry soldiers from the late American Civil War to the pivotal day of the Battle of Camden on August 16th, 1780. These troops will be equipped with the best, most advanced weaponry available to cavalry troops in the Civil War and tactical knowledge of their time. They're going to emerge into the Revolutionary War, fundamentally altering the historical landscape of this battle. Leading these time-displaced soldiers is Major General Philip Sheridan, a figure renowned for his strategic brilliance and aggressive cavalry tactics during the Civil War. Sheridan's leadership style, characterized by bold Old maneuvers and an acute understanding of cavalry's potential on the battlefield is poised to play a critical role in the new historical context. The original Battle of Camden was defined by the British's disciplined linear tactics and the American reliance on less experienced militia flanking the Continental regulars. The British effectively exploited the militia's inexperience, causing a hasty American retreat and leaving the Continental troops exposed and overwhelmed. Here, the introduction of Civil War cavalry under Sheridan's command presents a unique opportunity to shift this balance. Strategically placed, these cavalry troops could serve multiple pivotal roles on the Camden battlefield. They could be positioned to protect the vulnerable militia flanks, countering or deterring British flanking maneuvers. Additionally, their role as a mobile reserve would enable a rapid response to British attacks, reinforcing the weakest points of the American lines when most needed. More aggressively, the cavalry, with their superior weaponry and mobility, could conduct surprise strikes against the British infantry. The range and rapid fire capability of the Spencer carbines would present a challenge to the British formations unaccustomed to such firepower. Moreover, the tactical flexibility afforded by their mobility could lead to innovative battlefield maneuvers. These could include flanking the British forces, executing feigned retreats to draw them into traps, or even targeting strikes against British command units or supply lines. The presence of Civil War cavalry armed with advanced technology and led by a commander like Sheridan could significantly disrupt the British strategy. Their fire power could bolster the morale of the American militia, potentially preventing their early rout and adding stability to the American lines. Furthermore, Sheridan's experience and ability to exploit enemy weaknesses could lead to tactical innovations, shifting the battle's dynamics in favor of the Americans. The introduction of these troops, therefore, not only holds the potential to alter the course of the Battle of Camden, but also to reshape the trajectory of the Revolutionary War itself. With these new elements in play, the historical outcome of the battle hangs in a delicate balance, awaiting the impact of this anachronistic intervention. Section 4, The Battle. As dawn broke on August 16th, 1780, the landscape of the Battle of Camden was about to witness an unprecedented event in the annals of history. The sudden appearance of 200 Civil War cavalry
cavalry soldiers led by Major General Philip Sheridan presented a bewildering yet formidable addition to the American forces. The integration of these soldiers was swift, as General Horatio Gates, recognizing the strategic advantage they provided, quickly assimilated them into the American battle plan. The opening moves of the battle saw the Civil War cavalry positioned to guard the vulnerable flanks of the American militia. Sheridan, with his keen tactical mind, understanding that protecting these flanks was crucial to maintaining the integrity of the American lines. As the British forces, under General Charles Cornwallis, commenced their attack, the historical unfolding of the battle began to diverge from its original course. The British, confident in their strategy, aimed their initial assault at the American left flank, expecting an easy route of the militia as in the original timeline. However, the presence of the cavalry, armed with their Spencer carbines and Colt revolvers, quickly turned the tide. As the British approached, the cavalry unleashed a devastating volley of rapid fire, significantly disrupting the British lines. This unexpected firepower, starkly different from the weaponry of the era, caused confusion and hesitation amongst the British ranks. Taking advantage of this disarray, Sheridan ordered a bold maneuver. The cavalry swept around to the British flank in a daring charge, their sabers glinting in the morning light. This move, executed with the precision and speed characteristic of Civil War cavalry, caught the British off guard. The flank attack forced the British to divert forces to counter this new threat, weakening their frontal assault on the American lines. In the midst of battle, key moments began to define the outcome. One such moment comes when a contingent of cavalry, recognizing an opening, charged at the British artillery positions, successfully capturing it and turning their cannons on the British, using their own weapons against them. This action not only disrupted the British artillery support, but also bolstered the morale of the American troops. As the battle progressed, Sheridan's leadership and the cavalry's impact became increasingly evident. Their ability to move swiftly across the battlefield allowed them to respond to changing situations, reinforce weakening points, and exploit vulnerabilities in the British formation. The combination of their advanced weaponry and mobility introduced a dynamic that the British were ill-prepared to counter. The interaction between the cavalry and historical figures of the battle added layers of complexity. Gates, initially skeptical, soon found admiration for the cavalry's effectiveness, while Cornwallis grappled with the unexpected challenge, adapting his tactics in an attempt to mitigate the cavalry's influence. As the battle raged on with the cavalry playing a pivotal role in sustaining the American fight, their interventions and critical moments, whether through targeted strikes or strategic defense maneuvers, continually thwarted the British efforts. As the day wore on, the impact of the Civil War cavalry became undeniable, turning what was once a historical defeat into a potential revolutionary victory. The narrative of the Battle of Camden was being rewritten, with the echoes of Civil War cavalry charges resonating through the fields, symbolizing a unique fusion of American military history. Section 5, Outcome and Consequences. The involvement of Civil War cavalry under the command of Major General Philip Sheridan dramatically alters the course of the Battle of Camden. In this reimagined scenario, the battle concludes with a stunning American victory. The combined forces, bolstered by the cavalry's firepower and strategic maneuvers, managed to break the British lines, leading to a disorderly retreat by Cornwallis's forces. The American troops, inspired by this unexpected turn of events, pressed their advantage, turning a historical defeat into a remarkable triumph. The immediate aftermath of this victory significantly shifts the military balance in the southern colonies. The defeat at Camden, in our historical timeline, a crippling blow to American efforts in the South, is instead transformed into a rallying point for the Continental Army. The morale of American troops and militia is greatly enhanced, leading to increased enlistment and support for the revolutionary cause. Strategically, the British find their control over South Carolina challenged. The loss at Camden disrupts their southern campaign, forcing them to divert resources and troops to fortify other positions, thereby slowing their overall advance. This victory also impacts the support and involvement of foreign allies, such as France, who may view the American cause with renewed confidence, potentially increasing their aid and involvement. The ripple effects of this victory extend throughout the remaining years of the Revolutionary War. Key battles that followed Camden, such as the Battle of Cowpens, could see a more emboldened and tactically innovative American force. British strategies would have to adapt to this new American resilience, potentially leading to a more cautious and defensive approach in their campaign. This American victory could accelerate the end of the war, as continued defeats and stretched supply lines may demoralize the British forces and erode potential support for the war in Britain. The shift in momentum could also lead to earlier negotiations for peace, altering the timeline of the Treaty of Paris and the eventual recognition of American independence. The long-term implications of this altered victory are profound. An earlier end to the war could have significant impacts on the development of the United States, both politically and socially. The nature of the nation's growth, its policies, and its place in the world could all diverge from the historical timeline we know. Furthermore,
Furthermore, this scenario raises intriguing questions about the perception and study of military history. The success of civil war tactics and technology in a revolutionary war setting could influence future military doctrines and the understanding of warfare evolution. In conclusion, the hypothetical American victory at Camden, aided by Civil War cavalry, not only changes the immediate landscape of the Revolutionary War, but also casts a long shadow over the ensuing formation and trajectory of the United States, presenting a fascinating what-if in the tapestry of American history. In conclusion, this exploration into a hypothetical scenario where Civil War cavalry influences the Revolutionary War's Battle of Camden offers a unique window into the complexities of warfare and the impact of military evolution. The imagined integration of advanced tactics and technology from a later era not only redefines the outcome of a pivotal battle, but also il illuminates the broader narrative of history itself. It underscores how leadership, innovation, and strategic foresight can transcend their own times, offering timeless lessons and insights. S such speculative historical exercises serve a crucial role in deepening our understanding of the past. They encourage us to question and analyze the established course of events, revealing the intricate web of factors that guide the pr progression of history. This reimagined victory at Camden, while a product of fiction, challenges us to appreciate the fluidity of history and the enduring human qualities that shape it, reminding us that history is not merely a record of what was, but a reflection of what could have been.